I bid you welcome. I welcome you to my house. Welcome to my house. Welcome to my home. Hello Horror Hounds, welcome to my Horror House and welcome back to the year of James Herbert. Previously we looked at his first book, The Rats. He follows that up with an, an absolute fan favourite, a barnstormer, The Fog. Absolutely everything about The Fog is Herbert as a writer finding a, a next gear, a next level on from his first book, The Rats. Everything uh, about it, um, pacing, uh, story arc, uh, scope characterization all of it i think is an improvement on his first work a, a quantum leap forward it's no surprise that the fog remains one of his most famous works and one of his fans absolute favorites i describe the rats as a short sharp kick to the balls the fog is more like being held down and kicked repeatedly by a gang of people surrounding you if The Rats was Herbert's entry into eco-horror or nature attacks horror that was prevalent in, in the mid-70s, then The Fog is his current version of a lineage that goes back to sort of uh, War of the Worlds, Day of the Triffids and Quatermass. What Herbert does, uh, and I think what stamped him out from The Rats onwards, is that he... he sets his stories in a very recognisably now UK. Uh, it's weird reading them back because they, they become a, a snapshot of the UK from, from 40, 50 years ago, but at the time sort of screamingly current. And his drive to be as descriptive and explicit as possible sort of set his writing as something current whilst acknowledging uh, that sort of lineage. This does have a 50s B-movie sci-fi feel to it. It does have a John Wyndham type uh, feel to it. Um, the premise of The Fog is that there, there's there's an earthquake in a small Wiltshire village and through this fissure a, a, a fog emerges and grows and starts roaming around the, the countryside and if you get caught up in the fog it drives you insane you, you become psychotic either instantly or within about 24 hours you either kill yourself you become a murderous killer yourself think of um the blob where the blob doesn't eat you it turns you into one of the raveling infected that we see in something like 28 days later which it's itself has a direct lineage to the works of john wyndham in The Fog, we follow Holman, who works for the Department of the Environment, and it's his job actually to investigate other areas of government to make sure that they're not breaking any environmental laws. So straight away, if you remember in the video for The Rats, we said it stretched in uh, credulity quite a lot that his sort of art teacher protagonist by the end of The Rats would still be at the heart of government involved in the, in the planning to, to try and... Um, destroy the rats. Here he's, he's learnt from his mistake, he's put a character front and centre who already works uh, within the government. Um, right at the start of the book he comes across the fog and becomes infected and actually builds an immunity so he's uh, the only person that they have in the UK that they know is immune to uh, the effects of the fog so they, they need to keep him right at the centre of the operations um it makes things run so much smoother you're never questioning well why is he still there why why is he meeting with the prime minister herbert uses the same uh technique of vignettes that he employed in the rats to give uh, a sense that the threat is growing and becoming more epic really uses uh, that technique of these sort of standalone chapters where we see people or groups of people encountering the fog and becoming infected and then the horror ensuing from that uh, superbly it just it just builds and builds and builds unlike the rats we don't ever feel like we're leaving our hero for too long we're always coming back to Holman Holman's always invested and in, in, in at the center of the story but we just get these sort of uh, painterly scenes uh, around around the periphery, around, around the main focus of the story to say, no, shit's getting worse out there. It's getting worse and worse. It's building and building. Uh, 
ultimately the, the pace of the fog is it's just superb it, it is like one of these 1950s sort of sci-fi dis disaster movies ultimately inevitably uh, the fog descends upon London um, uh, this is after sending the entire of Bournemouth mad <laughs> mind you in one of the most shocking sequences in the book it moves and then settles into the basin of London and sort of the, the last uh, good chunk of, of the novel is Holman making his way th through London to try and find the nucleus of, of uh, the fog for various reasons that aren't important to go into here and it's th think of uh, Frank Darabont's uh, The Mist mixed with uh, 28 Days Later instead of slimy creatures out there it's just a, an entire city full of, of insane people doing just just mad brutal vicious uh, stuff. The punctuations of violence in this are shocking. I think uh, the fog has got a reputation of, of being wall-to-wall -wall gore and it, it absolutely isn't. Most of the effects that he goes for are, are chilling but there are two maybe three moments of real extreme, uh, extreme violence that uh, and one towards the start which is probably the worst and most shocking. I mean it, the shock from that incident with the garden shears reverberates throughout the entire rest of the book. And I think it makes people think that the entire rest of the book is as violent and, and horrible as that. It's it's not. He's he's not a sledgehammer writer like an awful lot of his copyists are. He, he does things for a very specific reason. And when he decides to, to shock and disgust you, it is for a very specific reason. And he does employ those moments very precisely throughout the book. And I think... Um, He's showing a lot of skill and, and more craft than he is given his due for even today, I think. Two or three moments of extremely disturbing, explicit violence um, are enough in a book, are enough for him in a book that's 230 pages long. In, in, in lesser hands, this scenario would be used to just be wall-to-wall -wall splatter, um, splatter punk, uh, writing for shock. Herbert's never really been about that. He's always been much more precise than his critics uh, give him credit for. I guess it's hard to, to credit a writer, if you want to be sniffy about it, who works in the horror genre. And his first book was about giant killer rats. And his second book was about a fog that drives people into uh, murderous uh, psychotics. I guess if you're a critic, it's going to be kind of hard for you to, to acknowledge uh, any deafness or, or skill involved in creating this, but um, Herbert built built a career on this, and it wasn't just by churning out pulpy shockers. Now, yeah, these these first couple of books, they have an element of pulp to them. There's absolutely nothing uh, wrong with taking uh, pulpy staples. There's nothing wrong with pulp uh, fiction in and of itself. I mean, God forbid uh, we be so blimmin' snooty as as. Uh, to, to start giving a hierarchy to literature. Now, fuck that. We're, we're on a horror channel here. We, we, we know how people already look down their, their noses at, at the entire genre that we love. So, f fuck that. What I'm trying to say is that even, even among his contemporaries and among the people who copied him, Herbert has always been a, a step above. He's always had a, a, a skill. And over his career, we'll see him refine that skill. He doesn't always hit the bullseye. And in later videos... I'll be absolutely clear when I think that is the case. But from the rats to the fog, huge improvement. Uh, the, the, the fog is, having just reread it, it's a blistering story. It remains impactful. It remains powerful. The engine driving it forwards uh, is really efficient. I'm astonished and will continue to be astonished. Uh, this will probably be a refrain through uh, going back through his books astonished that no one has wanted to to try and adapt this for the screen herbert has become he was cinematic in the rats he has become even more cinematic here the set pieces are larger the, the scope of it is more epic the sort of vignette chapters absolutely scream uh let's cut cutaway scenes in in, in, a, in a movie uh it's an epic disaster movie with the feel of a sort of Day of the Triffids thing, the um, 
H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds link is kind of apposite, especially for me living in the south of England, because all of the all of the places the uh, the fog visits are relatively close to me. It still stands up. It's still a strong novel. It's it's uh, it's. I would maybe suggest if you want to dip your toes into James Herbert, you might want to skip the rats and start with uh, the fog. That gives you a, a much better handle on the man moving forwards. By all means, dip back to the rats. It's a, it's a slim little volume, especially if you uh, want to read the whole of the rats trilogy. I will recommend that because it ends with domain, but I'm getting way ahead of myself here um, because after the fog for the year of James Herbert uh, comes his third novel, The Survivor. <laughs> how people already look down their, their noses at, at the entire genre that we love, so f fuck that. <laughs>